subconsciously, I really didn't know what I was watching, but I grew up watching Dusty Rhodes down here and the great Malenko and Eddie Graham, Jack and Jerry Briscoe, and all the big wrestlers that came in when the promoters were friendly in exchanging talent. Then Senior would send down like Ivan Putsky, the Mighty Igor, Superstar Billy Graham, Ivan Koloff. So I get to see everybody here. But the one thing I remember was no matter how great the matches were, As soon as Dusty Rose came out for the main event and somebody would chop him in the throat, he'd go right down like a tub of shit and start selling his ass off and the place would start rumbling. So subconsciously, I was such a huge Dusty fan watching him. And then when I saw Billy Graham come in, I said, well, I want to sell like Dusty, which I didn't even know what selling was, but I want to look like him. Yeah. And so I kind of like had that subconsciously and I stumbled around my first territory with the Fullers. And then I quit and went back to work on the docks, loading ships because I wasn't making enough money. And then I went up and worked for Lawler and those guys. And uh, they had it to where they didn't want me selling. They wanted me to stay strong, you know, up there. So I had a pretty good little run in Memphis. But then I quit again and went back to the docks. But when I went back up to uh, New York in 78. It was for the old man. Yeah, I was just, you know, I could sell because I was working with Andre. But I was a heel. So I really didn't have it figured out completely. But then when I got fired there by Vince Sr. for doing the Rocky movie. Why did he want you to do the Rocky movie? Well, because the, the mindset back there wasn't like it is now, back I, then. Okay. That we, we want Stone Cold to do his TV show. And we want Stone Cold to do Expendables. And we want The Rock to do this. Back then, if you're a wrestler, you're a wrestler. And I told Vince Sr., hey, I got this call from Stone. And, and which you thought was a rib. Yeah. And it ended up being a real deal. Yeah. And this was a launching. Dude, I remember seeing Rocky Three when I saw you in that because I'd been following your career forever because I've been watching since I was seven and you were on top of the world. And when I saw you come out as Thunder Lips, I was like, holy shit. It was like yeah. that, that, that part was tailor made for you. Anyway, back to your story about the salesmanship. Yeah. You got fired from Vince Sr. Right. Vince Sr. fired me for doing the movie because you weren't supposed to do movies or TV shows or anything like that but then i went to japan and i hung out there for a long time because i had a girlfriend in japan <laughs> and i had a blast over there and i sent all my pictures to Vern Gagne because i heard that minneapolis was the territory brother you work four days a week they fly you around on a plane i've been driving everywhere i don't put four samoans in the car i'm not used to flying on a plane so You know, a plane and four days a week. And when I went into Minnesota, I sent all my promos in where I wouldn't show them my face. I said, if you want, and my arms were big back then. I was like 330 pounds and I was all yacked up and training every day. And I went in there and I, all my promos were with my back to the camera saying, if you want to see this face, you got to buy a ticket. You know, I was thinking that I was going to be this big heel going in there, but everybody was cheering me because they wanted me to beat Jesse's ass. And when I went up there, Vern Gagne got in my head and Greg Gagne. I would give him his due. They said, bro, you need to go down and stay down and start selling. So those three years I had in Minnesota, that's where I learned to just crawl around and beg for help and sell with my head up and don't keep my head down and show the story, you know, show them the movie with the expressions in your face and crawl and stay alive and fight back. And, you know, there's an art to the selling. Everybody has a different character, but there's a way to get that compassion and and people on your side when you're down and create emotions. So three years in Minnesota with Vern in my ear and Greg in my ear, that's where I learned how to sell there. So when I went back to wrestle the Sheik, January 23rd, 1984, I was ready. You know, I knew what needed to be done. You had the tools of the trade. It took me that long to figure it out. But then if you started in Florida, right? Yeah. Working for Eddie Graham. Right. Okay. I always heard he was a genius. Now he passed before my time and I didn't get a chance to get down there. But how, how much of a genius was Eddie Graham? 